I really appreciate you joining me today. And this first story comes from Essex. And it's about the murder of Michael Ogwa that occurred in the Lakeside Shopping Centre on the 28th of April last year. He was needlessly killed in an argument that started when he tried to speak to a girl by a fast food restaurant. The incident started when he was walking through a food hall at 4.30pm. He was with several friends and he made his way past one kiosk where 23-year-old Mohammed Khan, 20-year-old Brandon Luchmansing and 21-year-old Shannon Weston were sitting. Michael briefly spoke to Weston and at this point Khan and Brandon got up and confronted him. Khan was armed with a flick knife and the two groups exchanged words before Khan and Brandon chased off Ugwa's friends before effectively cornering him. Michael attempted to defend himself and picked up a chair from the seating area but dropped it as Brandon threw another chair at him. Khan approached Michael from his left side and lunged at him with the knife, stabbing him under the arm through the ribs and punctured his heart. Khan and Brandon ran off and met up with Shannon Weston, who had already left the area, and made their way out of the centre via the Primark entrance. Meanwhile, Michael made his way to the escalators at the entrance to the food court, and this is where he collapsed, and despite the best efforts of emergency services, he sadly died later on. The whole incident was caught on cameras. There's 362 cameras in Lakeside Centre. And on the 2nd of May, Brandon was arrested in Dagenham on suspicion of murder. Weston was arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender. And two days later, Khan, of no fixed address in Ilford, was arrested on suspicion of murder. They were all charged and pled not guilty. They all appeared at Basildon Crown Court on the 22nd of May and Khan was found guilty of murder and affray. Brandon was found not guilty of murder but a jury decided he was guilty of manslaughter and also affray. Weston was found guilty of three counts of assisting an offender. They are due to be sentenced at the same court with a date yet to be confirmed. The senior investigating officer, Detective Chief Inspector Julie Gowan said, First and foremost, my thoughts go to the family of Michael, who have shown great dignity throughout the investigation and the following court case. No conviction will ever bring Michael back, but we hope that justice helps the family to move forward with their lives. This case shows the tragic consequences of carrying a knife and also how quickly this incident escalated. And Khan had tried to claim that he was carrying the knife for self-protection, but there was no suggestion that he was in danger in any way. And then there is a statement from the director of the Lakeside Shopping Centre trying to reassure people that it's very safe to go there. And to be honest, I don't think this is really relevant to the case. Of course, most of the time people expect to be safe in a shopping centre, but for them to start doing damage limitation, I feel is inappropriate in relation to the actual story. So I want to send my condolences to the family of Michael and please pay respects in the comments below. In some other news coming from Burnt Oak in London, a teenager was shot on the 23rd of the 5th, 2023. Police were called at 20 past 3 in the afternoon to Waitling Avenue at the junction of Orange Hill and members of the public reported a shooting at the location. Police and ambulance service attended and a male believed to be in his teens was found at the location with suspected gunshot wounds. He was taken to a central London hospital where his condition is being assessed. Video footage of him lying in the street being treated by paramedics has gone viral on social media and this is something that I don't agree with and I believe that it's insensitive to the families of the victims. We don't know what this boy's condition is. He could potentially die later on, God forbid, but that is a potential. And if you're sharing somebody's loved one's death on social media, it's quite unsettling because some people will find out what has happened via social media. So please be considerate when you are sharing footage onto social media about the families and about the people that care about the victims because at the end of the day, this is not fair to just force gore onto people with at least not having a warning. Thank you to Crime Scene Images for their coverage from the scene and it shows a large police cordon on a main road and also forensic officers gathering evidence for a potential later trial but there has been no arrests as of yet. This was outside a train station, very popular, and it was in the middle of the daytime, just after school times. And there would have been a lot of people walking around. And from what I can see, there was a lot of witnesses as well. So let's hope this young boy makes a full recovery. And I'll definitely keep you updated on any charges that come with that case. In an update to a story that I covered from Hayes yesterday, in relation to the murder that took place on Reynolds Road, the victim has been identified as 30-year-old Sean O'Neill from the Hayes area and today the police have charged somebody with his murder. 
Shaquille McCree, 26 years old from Sinclair Road, West London, is due to appear in Wimbledon Magistrates Court on the 25th of May for Sean's murder. Another man who has only been identified as Man B has also been arrested and he has been bailed. Police were called at 10 to 7 on Thursday the 18th of May after a man was found injured in Reynolds Road. The London Ambulance Service attended and he later died at the scene. His family had been supported by specialist police and a post-mortem is due to take place today. They believe that his death was caused by sharp forced trauma to the chest and abdomen which would symbolise a knife attack. So I want to send my condolences to the family of Sean and we will definitely follow the trial outcome and let you all know what really happens. And I really appreciate everybody's stories that they send every single day. It's really important that the viewers provide these stories and just remind me of certain things that are going on across the country. And you can get in touch via news at scarcitystudios.com. That is the email. And also social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. All of the DMs are open and you can contact 24-7. So I really appreciate you joining me for this update. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Peace.